I am totally serious with what I am saying inside of the title of this video. This isn't completely clickbait. Pizza Tower. This weird looking game straight out of paint is my number one contestant for probably the best indie game that I played this year. Did I play it a lot? Not really, but not gonna lie, what I played was fire. And with that, hey, Eric here, introducing you into Pizza Tower, the weirdest but also the most interesting game there will be this year. Have fun watching. It's gonna be worth your time. Pizza Tower has a quite easy introduction. Peppino, a pizza restaurant chef, is in big debt. Business just isn't booming. I can totally relate to that. What doesn't change, sorry if I made him hope, but the pizza face appears, threatening him to destroy his beloved pizzeria with a railgun. Peppino, all of shock and fear, straight up running towards the tower, trying to stop Pizza Face from his endeavor. Besides him, his best friend Gustavo, showing him the way. I don't know if they are actually best friends or even friends. I just know he's there and I really appreciate that. By the way, over this time of this video, we should also answer the important questions like what are the best pizzas? So let me introduce you into my tier list with not every pizza, but at least I ranked it featuring pizza with spinach. I don't know the fancy term, by the way. This pizza is definitely a S tier. Not only am I not consuming that bunch of meat anymore, what makes this pizza close to be my only option, but also has this pizza because of its high protein content a high value for sport freaks, who I am definitely not. I'm living sad and alone in the basement and my only social contact is when talking into a microphone a written text that 1000 people hear when they didn't stop listening in the first minutes. But yeah, see ya next time, bye! When something is very unique and something you definitely have to accustom to, then it is the movement. Pepino isn't just this old looking boomer that can barely move, he's the complete opposite besides being a boomer. Uh, that's sadly true. There are so many different moves you can learn and even if you can do the basics there's still a huge difference between someone that can play the game and someone who just can play the game. You can for example simply crouch or use the ground pound that everyone is probably familiar to because of some other Italian man. But the main gimmick of this game is to simply run so you can come through the levels as well as specific obstacles where you need specific speed for. Do not lose the speed because of some weird small step stones you can also just climb up the wall with whatever speed you have. Combining that with for example with crouching you're able to roll and similar to that everything you can do is different when running and fit smoothly except the super jump that ability is complete trash they could remove it and i would lose a single tier that is how much i hate it just because after playing the whole game, I'm still not able to use it without retrying it multiple times. It got so worse that I just lost a half minute of my lifetime just running from the one side to the other, hopeless trying to use this super jump for once. It is just so embarrassing and I totally don't see that it is my fault. Okay, that was kind of a lie. It, it is probably mine. However, while I maybe sounded like this gameplay is fun and I don't want to imply the opposite, it definitely is. The first levels or walkthrough still probably will be something not that funny. Just because the movement feels very weird at first, but gets very addicting after playing the game for a while. It is just like a good wine that has to become better over time. I barely was able to hit a specific speed level to come through the iron blocks or just bonked against the heightenings of the ground. Sometimes I also just didn't have the speed to run up the walls. In general I just ran against everything. There wasn't really a difference between a weird flying stair in the air or an enemy in my way that I couldn't kill because of my lack of speed. Because I didn't mention it but your speed is actually able to delete the enemies out of your way, giving you a huge potential of high combos and flawless runs through the levels. They rarely happen, okay, let's be honest, without going for flawless runs they never happen. There will always be this one moment that stops you but the possibility 
ability exists, and this is also something the game encourages you to do if you want to play more than the main game. But hey guys, welcome back. My tier list with not every pizza, but at least I am ranking it today featuring fungi. That means there are mushrooms on. It's just a fancy term for that. You have probably already heard because of a former episode. I am a flexitarian. What does mean I'm flexing with my not existent muscles? That would be very embarrassing. But that I'm only eating occasionally meat means that fungi is close to be my second option when it's about eating pizza. For me, this pizza is a 100% S tier, but only when it's combined with onions for some spicy flavor. Vault maybe a B. Fungi is just good. Mushrooms are good. You should try it out. See you next episode. Bye! The art style of Pizza Tower is something probably everyone would point out as something special. Some in a negative way, others in a very positive one. If you would ask me, I think the art style is a complete masterpiece and is what makes this game so extremely good. Would Pizza Tower be a normal pixel art game? I would definitely not play it. And I guess even when, the fun just wouldn't be the same. This paint-like art style gives the games in so many ways charm and love and makes the game extremely unique. It is just funny to see these weird, quirky looking animations and bad paint arts. Overall, the art style is what this game gives this specific humor that just gets delivered through the complete overacted emotions of Peppino. I don't know if there are any haters that criticize the art style. If, I won't understand any point they have because it's objectively stupid. Every level has its own loading screen that gives you some first insights of how the level could look like and what the idea is going to be besides the level name. John Gutter, for example. The first level is about John Gutter, the pillar. He isn't really happy. Or the Oregano Desert, where he's running away from an insane alien cow. His expressions are so insane. Sometimes even the best depiction of golf, with Cannon Pepino holding a shotgun. You are dead meat. Or straight up a horrific depiction of war in complete red, a scared Pepino in the foreground and a very scary looking one in the background. Anyways, I really love these loading screens, just giving everything this bonus entertainment. But you just feel it as well in the levels. Every level is just uniquely designed. Here are we for example in a complete rotten city, so basically Berlin, great city. But in another level we are in a hot kitchen where ketchup is in the background or a lamp inside a wall. Rarely reusing any of the graphics and when only the graphics that are used everywhere. How the levels look do make this game extremely good and I can guarantee you is the reason why the replayability of this game is just so insanely high. It isn't feeling like just another level of this world, it feels like the level are their own unique worlds and don't follow any given theme, something I extremely appreciate. Oh man, welcome back to my tier list about not every pizza but at least I'm ranking them today featuring kebab pizza. While I literally didn't eat it for around a decade, I remember this pizza as a brilliant masterpiece. It is just the meat and sauces from kebab, but on a pizza. I don't know how many people actually are able to acquire this taste, but you should try it. It tastes yummy. S tier from my side. Bye bye, see you around. Okay, but maybe after being here for a while, you maybe have the question, what are even the levels like? What do they offer? Well, they do offer basically everything. Pizza Tower has maze-like levels that want you to abuse the movement as good as possible. And does that extremely good. Like I showed that at the beginning, you do bonk sometimes, but you also can have, even as a casual, these good flawless moments of going through the levels. And due to the unique level designs of every level, every level has its own own way of playing, reinterpreting the main formula in a new way. Sometimes there are saws in your way. Sometimes a goblin is shooting you with bombs from the front of your screen. Sometimes you even end in a Donkey Kong shadow level. And I didn't say sometimes enough already because sometimes there are straight up calls in your way. So just calm down, breathe a bit with me. <sighs> and play a small round of golf. Just a simple round of golf. Very calming and refreshing and yes, you can actually play golf in this game. How didn't you buy this game already? It is so good! And yeah, there are some really amazing and cool level ideas that feel specifically interesting and funny. Just hitting you out of the head nothing with a complete different idea than the others. Taking the complete concept of the game upside down. Like I said, sometimes you're just ending in a golf course, becoming the golf ball. Or inside of a Five Nights at Freddy's facility because how can a prominent indie game not contain Five Nights at Freddy's? That isn't just possible. A complete interesting level where the be fast thing just doesn't exist anymore. You must sneak and try to not get found or kill the set of teeth. Else a puppet is following you and trying to kill you. 
Love Nav. But besides this level, the obvious best level of the game, because who am I fooling? It is Nav. Of course, it is the best level, but the second best level is War. War was the first and only level I got kicked out because he ran through the battlefield with a shotgun, trying to destroy a bomb to reset the timer, else he will lose. It was a very fun and stressing level, and look at Muscle Pepino. This level was just the whole game combined with pushing my heart rate to its limit. I just nearly died because of one second. <sighs> But it isn't enough. Yeah, you heard me right. Not enough. Some levels contain for entertainment some special power-ups. Special power-ups that are mostly exclusive to their levels. And allow the level to acquire a complete new spice by reinventing the wheel. Or should I say pizza? <laughs> you get it? Because pizzas are round like wheels. I ate my life. There are so many creative ideas, like a chicken that gives you some better jump control and with a hook higher jumps, also an overall heavier attack. A sausage that you can ride. That's basically it. Or Pepino just simply puts himself on fire by eating a spicy chicken wing. What I can totally relate to because while actually loving the taste or, to be precise, pain of spice, I kinda can't eat that stuff anymore because I do get problems with my skin because of that. Or at least that's the theory. I don't know what is actually happening. I just feel trash. <laughs> He also can become a ghost to go through specific objects and fly through the level, allowing you to have a complete new way to control him and playing the game, as well as a complete new experience of his speed. Or he's just a simple pizza box, having the flappy bird controls and yes, that is not a joke. This pizza box is real and I love it. I just really appreciate it that there are so many different mechanics and abilities inside of this game. And I can't say it often enough, the replayability of this game is insanely high, like for real. Even after playing the game for once, playing old levels doesn't feel like you already know everything. It is more of a new experience than everything else. Just because you feel that you did become better at this game and appreciate everything a lot more. I would even go this far to say that every playthrough after the first one is better than than the first one. Especially because it just feels way better, because you just became better at the game. So I can't say it often enough, but Pizza Tower has genius and amazing level design and is definitely an amazing platformer. But, oh hey, you're here too at my tier list about not every pizza, but at least I'm ranking it. Today featuring Pizza Diavolo. What a coincidence, really? Who had thought that? Pizza Diavolo is a pizza with spice. Unfortunately, because of my trash body, my skin can't comprehend spice anymore, so this pizza became another one that I am not able to consume. How sad. Still a S tier. It is made with anchovies and mushrooms, if I'm right, so a spicy but very salty taste. Making this pizza a special one instead of my memories. But yeah, bye bye! You are probably thinking after my small talk about that the game is so amazing and everything so unique that there is nothing to add to this game besides some small boss fights. Right? You are such fools because it is the complete opposite. The main mechanic, the best thing and most stressing thing of this game got named yet. The pizza time. You might ask what that is. If it's the part where you get some spicy free pizza. And while I would appreciate that, no. At every end of each level is a pillar. You remember that? One John dude dashing through him, I assume killing him, activates the pizza time. A moment where you have to run back at the beginning of the level you are playing right now. In a specific time limit. Because else, care, angry pizza face will awake and follow you, you don't want that, else you just die. Allowing you to show how much of the layout and mechanics of the level you still know, while stressing through it as if you ate some spicy burritos and you really have to go fast on the toilet, like, like really fast. Not a real life inspired story by the way, but this time actually for real, it, it isn't real life inspired. The layout still slightly changes, so you have to sometimes still walk some different ways, but that isn't a disturbance at all, it just makes the levels overall more fluid and is a wonderful implementation. In addition, it's also just the most stressing but also greatest thing in this game and something you always look forward to when playing a level. And it also always feels like that. As well as the soundtrack being one of the biggest banger of the series. Yeah, tier list about not every pizza but at least I'm ranking it today featuring Pizza Margarita. And I mean it is nothing but still pizza, good made, S tier but most often the simply A but we are 
aren't an English show, so congrats for another S tier. Bye! Oh yeah, I ended the last section with mentioning the banger soundtrack of the pizza time. <sighs> you probably heard a lot of them already, because I use them in the background of this video like I normally do when reviewing a game. These soundtracks are total banger, and I normally only really remember banger soundtracks made by Nintendo. What well, doesn't imply that they only do good tracks, but I think the most tracks I remember are from them, or Persona. <laughs> But Pizza Tower became a part of this list. The soundtrack of this game really feels amazing and every track is on its own amazing. I read that the composers are Mr. Sauceman, Class Gigito and Post Elvis and I don't think any of the creator will see this video, but just in case, I really want to say how much I appreciate the work. Like, for real, I heard the soundtrack while writing the script for multiple hours, and while playing the game as well, of course, and they are just good tracks. Like, holy, I love them. Especially Phase 2 Final Boss 1 or Unexpectancy Part 2. Just burned itself in my mind. I will probably remember overall Unexpectancy's parts for a while. But also the title screen track was just very good and somehow is in my mind as well. Overall, they are amazing tracks. I would love to use them every of my videos as well. Like for real, they, they I love them. That's peak music. Tier list, uh, pizza, yes. For cheese thing pizza, S tier. There are a lot of shit ones where every slice is another cheese on and not mixed together. What is a fellow crime, but still a very good pizza when it's not made horribly wrong. That is definitely a not happened story, but this time I'm lying. It happened, I hate my life. What is the purpose of this pizza when the cheese isn't mixed? Ah. <laughs> But, but to finally find an end, I'm sitting here already for a while. Let's talk about the last big point when I already mentioned unexpectancy, the bosses. Every part of the tower has its own boss you have to defeat and every of them has the overall same scheme, just with the different attack moves and patterns. Every of them has 6 HP you have to box out of them and then 6 other in their second phase. There isn't really anything to add, every of them isn't easy and I had to try fucking them for multiple times to figure out what to do against them. But they were definitely a highlight of every world and something I enjoyed even when it took me sometimes 20 minutes of playtime. They are lovable and amazing. Especially the end boss. I mean, Pizza Face not only has the best music, but also the most phases. But the second phase is just the best. After multiple tries, it isn't quite hard anymore. But just the music in addition to his freaky weird moves gave me the most fun out of it. He is just such a goofy character and that is what is making this boss so lovable to me. Especially when Reef fighting every boss again with slightly changed movesets, so Peppino gets his rage revenge was very amazing, showing his anger that feels to protect his already failed restaurant to then do the same with the pizza, just an amazing end boss and a perfect ending for such a banger game. Pizza list, not every bot ranking, yeah, woo wahoo. Yeah, you might have seen that I ranked every pizza on S, maybe because pizza is a good way to eat. Not that often because it can make you fat and unhealthy, but still a wonderful food. So the last pizza is your favorite pizza. Isn't that nice? Another totally obvious way of showing that I was too lazy to find another pizza that I can rank and like. Definitely not. No, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, thanks for following the small little turtles. Bye bye. And with that, I will end this video. You have a final run out of the imploding pizza tower, perfectly ending the game with Pepino defeating everyone a last time. Such an amazing ending, not gonna lie. When I said in the title and at the beginning that this game is probably the best of 2023, I meant that. I mean, there are amazing games, but I think there is and won't be something that can't beat this unique and great game. It fully shocked me and even when I only played it 6 hours until now for the main game, I can see me coming back as a casual or making out of it that I beat the hardest game series, where I try to go for the 100%. But that isn't something safe, uh, I'm just thinking, because this game would really, really deserve that treatment. Well, if you didn't buy that game until now and you're still here, I can tell you to give it a try. It will be worth the time, trust me with that. Even after this video, the experience can't be conveyed over words anyways. It is way better experiencing on its own. Like for real, it is very very good. Especially when you just love games like that. But yeah, like, subscribe, I wish you all a good night. Bye bye!